Catering costs can be a huge source of frustration when planning your wedding. I can't tell you how many messages I get from couples like you who are utterly horrified by the per person fee for dinner and drinks, and rightfully so. Today, we're going to explore setting up your own appetizer spread, and I think you'll be blown away by the savings. Stay tuned for my detailed roadmap to menu planning, shopping, and setting it all up. The cost of food and drinks can be a huge source of frustration as you're planning your wedding. I can't tell you how many messages I get from couples who are absolutely horrified by how much it costs to serve their closest loved ones something as simple as dinner and drinks. Who knew that food was that expensive? For many of you listening, catering, food, and the drinks, this is going to be one of the biggest expenses that you'll face through the entire planning process. It ranks right up there with your venue, photography, and videography as the big, high-ticket, high-price items. Now, with that said, take it all in what a big investment that is, and think of the wedding meals that you have had served in the past at weddings that you've been to. So sitting at the table and looking down at your plate of chicken, mashed potatoes, and steamed vegetables, nothing out of the ordinary you would never have dreamed that that plate might have cost up to $100 to be placed in front of you, right? It's crazy. I will never forget one wedding that I went to. The entire event was absolutely gorgeous. There was little expense spared. There were hundreds of guests. But the meat that was served for dinner was literally unrecognizable. Now, don't get me wrong, it was a beautiful event. I am not a food snob by any means. It tasted fine, but we literally still don't know if it was steak, chicken, or pork. That's how overcooked it was. It was covered in a thick breading. It was unrecognizable. And that completely forgettable plate of food times 200 wedding guests that all probably set the couple back at least $20,000. That is so much money. Now, don't get me wrong. There's a lot more that goes into a catering bill than the actual food that gets served on your plate. I completely understand that. There's a ton of setup, a ton of cleanup. You have to hire and pay servers, bartenders, there's alcohol, there's plates and glasses and the cost to clean all of this. The list goes on and on and on and we get into that in great detail in some other past shows that are totally dedicated to catering. For our conversation today, we're going to be focused on taking a big chunk out of this budget item. So let's save you as much as possible. And to do that, we're going to focus on setting up your own appetizer spread for the cocktail hour. Here's a roadmap of where we're going for the rest of today's show. We're going to review everything you need to know to set up your own appetizer spread. Everything from menu planning, shopping, exactly how much to buy per person, what it costs, and all the things you need to keep in mind to set this up and pull it off without a hitch. We're going to start with a very streamlined, very affordable, and very simple menu. We're going to call that appetizer menu number one. And later in the show, we're going to review a much hardier option with lots more to offer, lots more items, a little more gourmet, and we're going to call that appetizer menu number two. So of course, you wouldn't be serving both of these. It'll be a pick one or the other, depending on what your wedding setup is, your wedding budget, and your personal tastes. Now, even if you're listening and you already know that you're using a more traditional caterer for the main meal, 
doing your own appetizer spread is still a wonderful way to customize what you're offering so you get to hand pick your very favorite things to share with your guests. You also get to up the quality. You get to go shopping and pay wholesale prices for these menu items without any of the markup that a catering company is going to pass down to you. And the result of this is, of course, that you will save a ton of money over handing this over to a professional caterer. So if this sounds like it's an option for you, given your venue, your catering desires, and you're ready to save a ton of money and have a ton of fun in the process, who's up for that? I know I am. So let's forge ahead. And even better, the process of making your own appetizer spread that we're going to review today is also appropriate for a ton of different types of weddings and even pre-wedding events like your bridal shower or your rehearsal dinner. So if outside food or drink is not allowed at your venue and this is not going to work for your actual wedding day, stay tuned because it is a really versatile system that we're going to walk through today that you can apply to lots of other events in your life. You can use this method to simply serve your guests an appetizer course. So in other words, you're just doing a traditional cocktail hour where some light snacks are served along with drinks, and then that's followed by a main meal and a full-length reception. You can also use the second menu that we're going to review as a full-blown cocktail style wedding reception spread. So this is the main event, the second menu that we're going to review. And that would be if you're going with a cocktail style reception only and you are not serving a main meal. The cocktail style reception is a really affordable and really popular option for those of you who are looking for a little less fanfare. You don't want the all out dinner and dancing, the full night celebration. This is more of an abbreviated style reception. Okay, so let's get back on track here. That second menu is going to be much heavier. It includes lots of protein, larger quantities, much more variety and a lot of tasty, fun little extras on the side. We'll get to the details of all of that in a few minutes. So even if you listen to today's show and you're thinking, DIY appetizer spread for the wedding day, nope, I'm out, not for me. This process that we're going to flow through for planning, shopping, and setting up, this translates to any event you host throughout your lifetime as a host or hostess, whether that's your rehearsal dinner for the wedding, a birthday party for 50 people, a dinner party for 12 of your closest friends, or an intimate wine and cheese tasting for you and your girlfriends. This is a great formula and a great skill to have, so bookmark this episode. And one last thing, I promise, and then we're going to dive into the goods. I've been really, really excited to share this show with you, and I've been hyping it up on Instagram for the past week or so in my stories. And in that, I've heard from a bunch of you who are not allowed to bring outside food or drink into your venue space, and you have to use an on-site caterer or a recommended caterer that comes from your venue. Ugh, I feel you so annoying. If that's the case for you, definitely still bookmark this show to use for a pre-wedding event like I just mentioned, any dinner, any party that you host. Forward it to anyone who's helping you plan your rehearsal dinner or your bridal shower and then bookmark it for the future. And on that note, this is a perfect time to mention for those of you who are early in your engagement and have not yet chosen a venue, this is the perfect time to say that choosing a venue that does allow you to bring in outside food and drinks is going to give you a ton of flexibility in your plans. I highly recommend making that a top priority item as you're shopping for venues. It's going to pay off big time dividends down the road as your plans start to come together. And with that said, if you're ready, I know I am, let's dive right in. 
The first thing we're going to do is make a plan. And I'm going to give you a little bit of background information here on what it costs to have a caterer do an appetizer spread for you. Dozens of the messages I receive from you are specifically dismayed and ticked off about the cost of the cocktail hour. I get a ton of dollar amounts and a ton of dollar ranges. This is really dependent on where you're located in the country, so it is hard to put a number on these things. But for a baseline average, let's go with $15 per person for cheese and crackers. Now, in a ton of my favorite restaurants, $15 will buy you an entire meal. So $15 for cheese and crackers? Ugh. That means for a wedding with 100 people, trays of cheese and crackers, and you might get a couple grapes, maybe a couple strawberries thrown on there too. That is going to cost you about $1,500. And we're not talking about gourmet cheese with honey and nuts and cured meat and delicious bread like a whole charcuterie spread that you would get in a nice restaurant. No, 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 no. We're talking grocery store quality yellow cheddar cheese and plain crackers. $1,500 is more than I spent on my wedding dress, our photographer, and all of our flowers combined true story. We could go to Costco right now, you and I, we could go to Costco and buy cheese and crackers for a hundred people. And do you know what that would cost? It would cost $76. Yes. (laughs) $76 total for a hundred people. That's 76 cents per person, less than a dollar. And a caterer is going to be charging you any range between, say, 8 to $18 for that? No, 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 no. So now given that, let's put things into perspective here. If you want to add anything that's a touch more fancy, like gourmet dried meat or nuts, olives, honey, bam, you're going to be looking at more like $20 to $25 and up per person for a catering company to set up the appetizer hour. We have got to beat the system here. And we're going to do it. So here's our plan. Here's exactly how we go to Costco and we get to that 76 cents per person number. I mentioned in the intro to today's show that we're going to choose a menu and make a shopping list for a couple of different levels of appetizer spreads. So we're starting really, really simple. This is appetizer menu number one. And the only things on this menu are high quality cheese, crackers, and grapes. And let's walk through exactly how we get to that 76 cents per person number. The first thing we need to do is figure out how much we need to buy for 100 people. And that's kind of overwhelming. I mean, who goes shopping for 100 people? Professional caterers do, but you and I probably not so much, not very often. The first thing I want to show you is just a really practical little hands-on experiment. So come with me into my kitchen and let's check out how much one person would eat of cheese and crackers and grapes. Okay. If you were like two drinks in at cocktail hour of a wedding, what would you eat? Quantity or what would I pick? Quantity. Dried meat, crackers, grapes, cheese. Like quantity, one hour, cocktail hour. You've had a couple drinks. You're going to maybe have one more drink before we go in. Sit down for dinner. How much of that would you eat? I would probably have three slices of one of the meats. Okay. Probably about this many crackers. Okay. Put them here so I can measure them. And no grapes. <laughs> that would eat, yeah. Okay. Grapes would not be a factor here. Cool. Good to know. 
Okay. Very interesting and actually pretty surprising to me. John is a huge, big, hungry husband and he eats a lot. And he chose two ounces of cheese, 14 crackers, and like three grapes. <laughs> And I swear he only picked up the grapes because I was standing there watching. I'm really not confident that he would eat any grapes if he was in an actual cocktail hour setting. So do with that what you will. The grapes might be optional or at least maybe we can cut the quantity in half. I did the same little exercise, little hands-on experiment and I chose two ounces of cheese, 10 crackers, and a healthy handful of grapes. So if you average us out on the grapes, we each took about a half a handful. I have a video of exactly what two ounces of cheese, four ounces of grapes, and 10 crackers looks like on the blog post that I did for today's show. It's very detailed. It has a ton of good information. So you'll definitely want to check that out at weddingplanningpodcast.co slash cheese. What I just listed there, the cheese, the grapes, and the crackers, it's actually a lot more food than I would have thought just hearing those numbers. So go take a look at the visual. That video is really helpful to get you to imagine what this actually looks like in terms of your guests making plates and eating it within the span of the one-hour cocktail session. Now, I also did some research online, and I found a few expert opinions on hosting and recommended quantities per person. Of course, there's a wide range out there depending on where you look, but for our menu of just a light spread of cheese and crackers to be followed by a larger meal, I'm going to stick to and set that you'll want to plan on about two ounces of cheese per person, 10 crackers per person, and two to four ounces of grapes per person. My friends, we are headed to the happiest place on earth. Nope, not talking Disneyland. We're talking about Costco. You can buy one or two kinds of cheese. I'm gonna be shopping for Monterey Jack and cheddar just to give a little variety. Or of course, you could just stick to one kind of cheese to keep things as simple as possible. That's totally fine too. Another quick note here, if you take a look at that video of my portion size and if you're feeling a little bit like you might want to round up and not risk running out of food, always better to have a little bit too much than not enough, then you could definitely round up. The cost of this food itself is so low that rounding up is really not going to impact your bottom line very much at all. So if you want to have that extra cushion, have a little leftover rather than being stressed out about running out, then by all means, round those numbers up a little bit to what you feel comfortable with. It's really helpful to hear actual numbers. I know this is an audio show. There's no visual component, so it's kind of hard to imagine to recap everything, for 100 people, you're going to want about 200 ounces of cheese. That's 12 and a half pounds. You're going to want 1,000 crackers. That's 10 crackers per person. And you're going to want about 200 to 400 ounces of grapes. That's anywhere from 12 to 25 pounds. If your friends and family are big into the fruit like I am, I would go towards the heavier side of that. If they're not so much into it and this is more of a garnish or a decoration, then you can, of course, scale back on it. And the grand total for all that food at Costco, that's that $76 number that I shared with you just a few minutes ago. That's amazing. Remember, for a full recap and a full outline of the quantities, the menu items, the prices, and so much more, remember to visit weddingplanningpodcast.co slash cheese. All right, after a quick break, we're going to up the ante and we're going to shop for appetizer menu number two. This is going to be the most delicious gourmet spread of meats, cheeses, nuts, fruit, olives, everything you could ever imagine to share with your guests during the cocktail hour. Imagine a to die for worthy charcuterie plate from your favorite bistro. Our spread is going to look like that, but for a hundred people, <laughs> and it's going to cost about 85% less than what a traditional caterer would charge you for a similar spread. Stay tuned. I'll be right back. 
When it comes to men's skincare, Caldera Lab is the perfect option for you to look and feel your best. It's super easy to add to your morning and your nightly routine, and we're talking clear skin, less wrinkles, and signs of aging. What's not to love? Caldera Lab creates high-performance men's skincare products, and the Regimen package leads off their product lineup. It's a twice-a-day routine, and it will transform your skin. The regimen includes three easy to use products, the clean slate, the base layer, and finally the good. And my husband, John is already loving the look and feel of his skin after just a couple of weeks. Finally, he actually gets why I've been so obsessed with my skincare routine for all these years. And just for our audience, we have an exclusive deal. You're not beating this offer. Use wedding at calderalab.com and 20% off right now. Get 20% off with code wedding at calderalab.com to make unforgettable first impressions with the best gift this holiday season. 20% off at calderalab.com with code wedding. All right, let's chat about something close to my heart. We often prioritize wedding photography and for a good reason. But here's a thought. Videography is just as, if not more, pivotal. Why? While photos freeze a moment, videos capture the ambiance, the laughter, the music, and those spontaneous, fleeting emotions. Enter Shutter and Sound Films. Their work isn't just videography, it's cinematic artistry. Relive the tremble in your partner's voice, the joyous applause, or that unexpected dance move during your reception. It's all there woven into a high-end film that's uniquely yours. And for those wondering about locations, they've got 14 major U.S. cities covered, including spots like Boston, New York, L.A., and D.C. Plus, they're all about adventure and are more than willing to travel for your big day. So as you plan, remember, photos frame moments, but videos they let you step back inside them. Check out Shutter and Sound Films at shutterandsound.com and let your wedding day be a cinematic masterpiece you'll revisit time and time again. Susan's Travel Services is so excited to partner with you to plan your honeymoon, destination wedding, or maybe even your bachelor or bachelorette party. Susan and her team have been planning dream vacations for 27 years, and they are truly the best in the business for start-to-finish planning services. Travel and new experiences are incredibly special to me, and Susan and her team have helped me plan some unforgettable vacations, including a bachelorette party in Cabo and a family anniversary celebration in Cancun. They meticulously researched the best all-inclusive options for us based on some very specific priorities and the professional assistance in choosing location, resort, activities, and transportation was absolutely priceless. From all-inclusive resorts in Mexico and the Caribbean, overwater bungalows in the Maldives, or that African safari that you've always dreamed of, save yourself hours of research and guesswork and let Susan and her team find you the best options for a once in a lifetime vacation. Reach out to Susan and her team today by emailing info at susanstravelservices.com and be sure to let her know that I sent you and get $50 off your final booking or $200 off your destination wedding. Her email one more time is info at susanstravelservices.com. Okay, let's move on to appetizer menu number two. Here we're going to do a much bigger gourmet service that includes meats, multiple kinds of high quality gourmet cheese, nuts, olives, and so much more. This appetizer spread is perfect for the following situations. First off, maybe you want to serve a much more filling appetizer round because your main meal is pretty light. This menu is also great for you if you just want to go all out and over the top and simple cheese and crackers just isn't going to cut it. And lastly, if you're doing a cocktail style wedding reception without a main meal, 
this more expansive and filling selection of food will be perfect for you and your guests. On appetizer menu option number two, we're going to serve four kinds of gourmet cheese, nuts, we have dried cranberries and apricots, dried meats, olives, pickles, gourmet crackers, jam, honey, spicy mustard, and grapes. Now, first things first, same as we did with appetizer menu number one, how much cheese, meat, nuts, crackers, etc. are you going to need per person? We're going to use for round numbers and example sake, again, we're going to use 100 people. And for this menu, let's plan on a little bit more cheese per person since we have multiple kinds being served. And since this is meant to be a little heartier of a menu, so I'm going to up the cheese from two ounces to three ounces per person, which is going to be about 19 pounds total. For the dried meats, we're going to go for two to three ounces per person. And let's meet in the middle of that and say 250 ounces total or about 16 pounds of meat. And we're talking a package at Costco that includes, it is so good, it includes prosciutto, dried salami, dried capicola. So 16 pounds of that for 100 people. For the crackers, we're going to do 10 per person again, so 1,000 crackers total. On the olives and the pickles, I would say four per person, so we need 400 total of those. On nuts, two ounces per person. I personally love nuts. Some people do not feel that way, and other people simply cannot eat them because of allergies. So if that's an issue with your group, make sure you have those sequestered on a certain part of the table that those people know to avoid. Anyway, we're going to go two ounces per person, so that's 200 ounces total of nuts for 100 people. And then for the grapes and or fresh fruit, anything you'd like to throw in there, strawberries are another really good one. Let's use four ounces per person and buy 400 ounces, that's 25 pounds of grapes or whatever fresh fruit you choose. And then any great meat and cheese platter has some really yummy spreads to go along with it. So we're going to also shop for honey, jam, and spicy mustard, which are just the perfect little compliments. They're going to add a splash of color on the platters and not you're not going to need a ton of that stuff. So maybe two jars of each, depending on the size of those, should be plenty. Now, all these numbers are not meant to be overwhelming. I just want to give you a real sense of what this all looks for. And remember, for a written breakdown of everything so you don't need to frantically be scribbling down notes, I have my detailed spreadsheet with all the menu items, the quantities, the total costs, all the things that we're reviewing today are available at weddingplanningpodcast.co slash cheese. Now that we've reviewed our two menus, let's pause and touch on some really, really important considerations that you're going to need to factor in for setting everything up and pulling this off successfully. I am not here to gloss over the reality or make this seem like for no extra work at all, you can easily save yourself thousands of dollars simply by listening to this show or simply by reading the blog post. It doesn't just magically happen on its own, sadly, as an exchange for all of that money that you're going to save, there is some additional work and time involved, and I want to be sure to share a really, really clear image of what goes into this so that you're not shocked in the days before the wedding by things that you did not expect or didn't plan for. So buckle up and do take note of the following things that you're going to need to consider. These are very important points. The first thing is who can be available to help you set everything up on the actual wedding day. These menus are both wonderful because we're not dealing with a bunch of perishable temperature sensitive foods. But obviously, meat and cheese cannot be left out for hours and hours, and you will need someone in the hour or so before guests arrive to be in there and getting things set up. Some suggestions for who this could be. 
If you have a time gap between your ceremony and your reception, that's good. That's going to work to your benefit. Maybe a couple of your aunts and or cousins can hustle over to the reception site after the ceremony and get everything laid out for you. Remember not to designate your wedding party members or immediate family to do this job. You guys are all likely going to be busy getting photos taken, greeting your guests, chatting, signing your marriage licenses. This is not a job for the wedding party or for you to be taking care of. And if you're using a day of coordinator to get things handled on the actual wedding day, a wedding planner for the day of, make sure to discuss this with them to get their thoughts. They're going to be really, really busy at this point in the day, just keeping everything in motion. This is going to be the full swing, busiest part of the wedding. And I'm not confident that pulling them away for an hour to set up appetizers is going to be the best use of their time. So don't assume that that person will be the one to set this spread up, but by all means, have that discussion directly with your coordinator and get their thoughts. Next thing to consider is make sure you have a plan of how you're going to store all that meat and all that cheese. Everything else on the menu can be left out at room temperature. That's not a big deal at all. So whether it's a refrigerator on site of your reception, maybe you need to fill up a couple of coolers to keep the meat and the cheese on ice. Just have a plan for that so that things aren't left sitting out for hours and hours before the reception cocktail hour. You don't want to do that. You'll need to think about where you're going to set up the food. So literally what tables are available, what counter spaces, what bar areas, what space is going to be available for you to set up all this food on for 100 people. Maybe your wedding is much smaller, in which case you need less space for that, but have a plan for where it's all, all going to go. And hand in hand with that, I would also recommend drawing a really simple map of what you want to be set up and where. This sounds a little bit micromanagey, but if you want your platter or your spread to have a specific look, you kind of want to mix in the grapes and have things scattered about and so every guest can pick and choose. You don't want someone to just open the crackers and dump a pile of them on the middle and then dump all the cheese next to it and dump all the grapes next to that. We want to kind of have it set out in a visually appealing way. So make sure that that's clear with just a really simple map or a really simple diagram of how you want everything to look. And back to tables really, really quickly or whatever counter space you're going to set this up on. I wouldn't recommend setting everything up in one single spot, especially if you're having a hundred ish people attending. That's really crowded for a hundred people to try to get in the same place at one time. So ideally, I would break this up into three or four different locations within the space so that people can easily access things at an arm's length and without having to wait in line and having a big crowd around one single table. Next thing to plan for is having any serving dishes you want, maybe small bowls for the nuts, any miscellaneous items like spreaders for the jam and the honey, uh, little cheese knives to cut from the blocks of cheese, tongs for picking things like grapes and cheese slices up. Tongs are optional in my opinion, but it might be nice to have a few of them on hand. Have all of this laid out, set aside, and ready to go so it's not missed in the last minute hustle. My favorite way to set up this style appetizer spread is on long rows of parchment paper just set directly down on the tabletops or the countertops. You'll find parchment paper at the grocery store. It's right by the aluminum foil and the plastic wrap. And serving everything laid out together looks really colorful, rustic, very pretty, and bonus, it gets you out of having to find a bunch of boards and serving platters to set everything up on. Of course, you'll also want small plates, and you can use really high quality paper plates here. No need to have glass plates for this. And cocktail napkins, those should all be set out where they can't be missed. Another really, really important prep item for your list is slicing all the cheese. 
and maybe cutting apart the grape bunches for easy grabbing, the only catch with those big, delicious blocks of cheese from our first menu is that they do not come pre-sliced. They cost $4.99 for two pounds for a reason. We're sacrificing some convenience here. So just make sure that you don't get caught in the very last minute with your poor aunt trying to frantically slice six giant blocks of cheese. Her hand will fall off. (laughs) So I would recommend that a group of you get together a couple days before the wedding to slice all of that cheese, map out what goes where on the tabletops, and make sure that you have all those miscellaneous serving items set out somewhere where they're not going to be forgotten. Very, very important. And speaking of slicing cheese, another option, of course, would be to buy pre-sliced cheese, which is available at your warehouse store like Costco or Sam's Club. The pre-sliced is going to be a little bit more expensive, and it's probably going to be slightly lower quality than those big blocks, but all the slicing is done for you, which is really, really nice. I think that covers the important things to consider and none of that was meant to scare you off from doing this. I am 1000% confident that this project is totally worth your time every single minute that you'll invest in it. I just want to give you all the info I can so that there are no surprises in those last days before the wedding. I hope you love today's show as much as I loved putting it together and sharing it with you. If you plan on doing your own appetizer spread or cocktail reception, I would absolutely love to hear all about it. I'd love to know the creative menu items you're including, who's helping you with the shopping and the setup, any extra creative touches that you've imagined. You can shoot me a DM on Instagram or be in touch by visiting weddingplanningpodcast.co slash contact. If you're on Instagram, look for me at weddingplanningpodcast, all one word, super easy. And quickly before we say goodbye, let me just recap a few resources that go along with this show. You'll find a detailed blog post of everything we covered at weddingplanningpodcast.co slash cheese. All the quantities, the prices, the menu items, and tons of pictures and videos. That's a can't miss. Thank you so much for tuning in to this episode of the Wedding Planning Podcast. For episode recaps and special offers, visit our website at wedpodcast.com. There you'll also find a link to submit your wedding questions and future show topic requests. Follow us wherever you listen for new episodes every Wednesday. And if you're loving the podcast, please leave a five-star rating and review to share your favorite episodes and thoughts with other couples. Wishing you a happy engagement. Thank you so much for letting me be a part of it. And we'll talk again next week, same time, same place.